Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to be playing around with Oakley. Uh, they have two separate projects. One is a speech-to-text mechanism and the other is text-to-speech. Um, basically turning audio to strings or vice versa. If you've watched uh, a lot of the videos on my channel, which I don't suspect very many of you have done, the projects I've been working on for a little while were around audiobooks. I started running um, during the pandemic, and so going outside, putting on earbuds uh, was, was very helpful. But there's only so much time you can spend listening to music and, and feel like you're not wasting time. So uh, I got audiobooks, I got podcasts. But something I really wanted was to take my own PDFs, my own files, because I, I, I'm not reading Harry Potter, I'm not reading Game of Thrones that um, is readily available on audio, audibles. I, I have things from work. I have documents that I want to read. Those don't, those wouldn't have audibles. So uh, I'm very excited to try Kokui because they claim uh, pretty amazing performances over here. Uh, they have underlined a couple of their <clears throat> of their products here, and you can see Judy Wave One is very well done. Uh, just shy of seventy five percent of listeners rated it as good. Um, I think this one over here that is maybe at 85, 90% um, is an actual human being. I've been using Windows, uh, male and female over here, and Google from time to time, and, and you can see they're, they're closer to 50, which understandable. So I'm, I'm very curious to see how they do. And how I'm going to do this is... Um, I know I saw it somewhere here. Ah, there you go. Uh, they have a couple samples, so I'm going to unmute here. Bill got in the habit of asking himself, is that thought true? And if he wasn't absolutely certain, it was he just let it go. The commission also recommends. Okay, so you can see there's a couple of samples here, and, and they sound pretty decent. Uh, not perfect, but pretty decent. I'm probably, I'm planning to do this real time because I don't think it's going to be all that complex. But uh, we will see how it goes. So, uh, I loaded up, the, I, I loaded up uh, GitHub and their TTS synthesis page, uh, they have installation instructions over here, and we're just going to follow that along the way. First things first, um, I have gone into my folder, Coqui Test, and the first thing I am going to do is create a virtual environment. So um, not a 100% necessary step, but if you have Python, you might as well do it. Um, that there we go. Um, you can run Python all throughout your computer and install these packages, but um, by creating a virtual environment in this particular folder, uh, you can install certain packages that you want to limit to just this folder. Um, if you're just planning to do one or two things with Python, globally it's fine. But if you start having dozens and dozens of projects, um, you, you don't want to manage so many. So um, we are, um, we created a folder dot venv with our virtual environment, and we're going to activate that now. Um, there. And so with this uh, bracketed virtual environment here, uh, we're going to be running 
various things. So uh, if you build pip list, you'll see basically nothing has been installed. Um, okay, so let's go into the readme, uh, and we're going to install TTI. Pip install TTI. The objective here today is just to go through, get the right models, get it running, uh, basically be able to create one or two MP3 files, and that's about it. Um, when we get through this a little further, you can start thinking about further projects. So what I mean by that is over here, we're going to likely... I'm not sure yet, but we're likely going to pass some string. So we'll make a command, TTS, we're going to put in a bunch of text, oh, I think over here, um, and then select a model, and it's just going to read text for TTS. How useful is that? Probably not really. What you want to do is be able to pull out walls of text from HTML files, EPUBs, PDFs, Word documents. Uh, all of that is kind of a separate project. Pulling out strings from a Word document is going to look quite different than from a PDF, and those are all kind of different projects. So we're just going to do what we can, but I imagine when I'm through with this, I'm going to look for something like a PDF to text Python converter. So, um... We'll just take a look. There's Pi PDF, PDF Plumber, a um, bunch of different modules that will be able to help you out. Now, how are we looking over here? It looks like we're almost ready. Not yet. Um, okay, so the other thing about these uh, AI kind of models is they they come with a lot of different models. Uh, if you take a look at Coakley's website, I, I don't know why the text-to-speech models aren't available yet, but uh, a lot of individuals have uploaded speech-to-text models. And what you can do is, is create your own model. So part of what they do is allow you to, say, use your own voice or use your friend's voices to try and train up a model. Um, I'm going to be using the default. Um, I, I don't know uh, if I would like to hear myself talk and read to myself. I think that's kind of weird. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about this website is uh, they have a demo here where you can very quickly train the model with your own voice. So over here, you can record your own voice and hear it read out English, French, and Brazilian Portuguese. Um, it, it was kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> um, you probably want a longer MP3. I basically read just this first sentence over here and tried it out, but it... it it's an interesting experience. So uh, if you haven't tried it, go to kokui.ai slash demo because uh, it is a bit eerie. Okay, um, how are we looking here? We are just installing all the way through here. and We're down over here. The one thing I'm very curious about is whether the pip install, um, the package installation, is going to include any of these pre-trained models. So if we go again to the installation piece, um, installation over here, uh, you got to select the model. So I, I assume, but I don't know that's correct, uh, that we would be able to to find some pre-trained models. Uh, the other thing that uh, I'm noticing right now is uh, I mentioned that what we're doing is just synthesizing speech. 
So we want to change text to speech. I don't care about getting my own voice in there or anyone else's voice. But there's a different installation piece over here. And it's occurring to me now that I can zoom in. Uh, if you want to train. So you need to, uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow over here to, to be able to train your own uh, models. Okay, so we are done. Um, we just installed the synthesizing speech aspect. What we want to do is we list out the models. So yes, list models. Okay, so there's quite a few. Um, There's multilingual tech front. Um, ah, so we want all of these English ones. And let's see if we can recognize any from their part. Um, hmm. Okay, so maybe not. I don't see Judy or Nancy in here. And I'm not sure what the vocoder versus TTS model needs. Let's, let's take a look. Uh, okay, so um, let's take a look at what this means. Because I have no clue. First of Vocoder. Okay, so it looks like you use a spectrogram first, and then um, you use this uh, vocoder. I'm starting to think it's supposed to be pronounced differently, like voice over coder or something, and and that will uh, be a second step. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Let's go back here and see what happens if we just run the basic here. Let's see, we have to, we have to download the model, so that's, that's useful. Ah, okay, I see. On your computers, okay. And we have an output. Text for ports. Let's see if we can run a longer sentence. What is a interesting sentence? Okay, um, okay. So we're going to run this over here. Okay, so that's that's useful. They're going to split it into sentences, so they do a bit of pre-processing, and they save it. So I'm going to unmute my computer. The most commonly used technologies in this step are convolutional networks associated with attention mechanisms.
Okay, so uh, it it's interesting that I just stopped at meh, so I don't know if there's some sort of limitation here, but actually that sounded pretty decent for default. Um, you, as I look at this now, it's starting to make sense. We go back to a list over here, and I don't know if we can zoom in. Yeah, we can. So it sounds like we're supposed to use a model to begin with. That is kind of the base voice. And then this vocoder is supposed to then make some changes to the sounds to make it uh, more natural. So two-step process. First is to, to have a model. Second is to use that coder. Um, if you select any one of these, uh, it comes with a default. It default chooses one of these uh, vocoders that, that comes together. So I assume they've chosen what they think is best. But in theory, you can choose both one of these and one of these of your own. So in this case, uh, the default, they used um, Tachotron and High Figin. And over here, they use the same ones. Ah, okay. So there's your TPS model. There's your vocoder. Um, and we can very quickly try something else. So uh, I don't know what DCA or DDC stands for, but let's have our so a lot of text and then model name. I think we were supposed to just start with the language, and then we have the vocoder name. And over here, we will pick something else. So let's go English, and they use high figin before. Let's use a wave grab. That sounds cool. And let's see if that sounds any different. Uh, we're probably going to have to download two new things to, to go with it. Oh. Um, what comes in here? Spectre 4 got three. What did I do wrong here? So we have model name. Ah, output. This again. There we go, we got the right amount of... Okay, so I think they might be using outpath instead, and I wonder if we should have a name here for them. And I should zoom in always. Uh, we'll call this ODCA wave grad dot wave file. Hmm. Something is wrong here. <laughs> Let's try again. So I'll put path. It's not. Oh, I see. I was. No, that's not. That's not. Oh. Get rid of the dash. Let's see if that was the issue. And of 
course, let's, let's see how we're at the output. <coughs> and you can see computers are very picky. Okay, you know what? Let's let's just get rid of this and see how we do with just selecting a different model. Something is wrong here. Let's go through this again. Max decoder steps. So I don't think that changed, um, and I can set max decoder steps. I would think, um, let's get style, language. Okay, that's probably under config path. Um... Look, the read the docs looks like it matches more closely to what's supposed to be showing. Um, where did we have those games before? Ah, uh, look. Um, in the uh, GitHub README, uh, it was just language, but we're supposed to have the type as well. So maybe that's why we weren't finding the right document. Um, and we're going to use WaveGrad again here. And we're just going to pull out Wait, see where we go here. No. All right, there we go. So, uh, read the docs seems to be much more updated than than their GitHub. Uh files. Uh, we're going to need to download this all the way through, but hopefully we can hear how it sounds like. I can hear my computer spinning up. I don't know if you can, but uh, this model, I think, must be a little more demanding. Uh, and hopefully it sounds better. Uh, the thing I'm noticing right now is, of course, that they have a list of sentences and it's splitting up. And I think this might be really helpful because um, maybe we can provide a list of sentences. And so the, or rather what I'm trying to say is, uh, one of the issues I have with getting text from a PDF is all of the paragraph breaks, all of the spacing is a bit weird. If this 
is it just doesn't care about paragraphing and it's just splitting it up into sentences. Uh, that's going to help me a ton. Uh, okay. Uh, while we're looking at, while we're waiting for that, and I'm going to move this over here so I can keep an eye out. Uh, let's see what else there. So synthesizing speech. And there must be a config file, config.json. Oh, you can run you can run a server too. So that's cool. You can throw it up on, on the web. But I wanted to know what the config config file config.json is. Uh -huh. So I'm going to create a new uh, text file here. And we can set how you train it differently. So epochs running more will help. Um, they're using different sets. Uh, where was that size? Print stamp. So um, hmm. <coughs> I'm a little bit concerned that this isn't running. So what I'm going to do is stop the video and I will rerun it. And you guys can see exactly how long it takes to, to, to run this. Um, so I'll restart the video soon. But we're, we're running up right against time anyway. So be right back. And we are back. Uh, 355 seconds. So, um, uh, what is that? Like six minutes or so? Um, six minutes or so versus, I think, over here, four seconds. So this is... I haven't listened to it yet. This better sound pretty good. Most commonly used technologies in this step are computational networks associated with attention mechanisms in order to improve the alignment between the input and the output. Just gonna play that one more time for you guys. Most commonly used technologies in this step are computational networks associated with attention mechanisms in order to improve the alignment between the input and the output. Okay, so, wow, that was muffled. Um, that did not sound good, so I don't think that was worth while. Um, the other thing I noticed is it did go all the way to the end, so I think what I'm going to do is, is try and use those same commands, but probably strip out this one. Um, okay, so all we're doing... Let me just turn off my volume here. Um, all we've done is install Coqui's TTS and run it through a couple times. Um, but really, this is really exciting. This was uh, exactly as simple as I thought it would be. And you can actually start running text through it. So I wonder uh, if, if I, um, if I uh, parse this through and uh use a script to pull out a lot of text and throw it in here whether that would look very different um and and how that would work so um hopefully that was useful uh the last time we did this we ran it through microsoft edge which frankly is a very dumb and time consuming way of doing it uh this this one makes a lot of sense to me um let me know what you thought uh we may build on on top of this over time. I, I think this might be a personal project off YouTube for me. 
but uh, we'll we'll see where it goes. So thanks for watching. Uh, thumbs up and subscribe if you liked the video. If not, comment. Let me know how I can do better. Thanks for watching. See you guys next week.